morning, everyone. I'm in the West Desert in Western Utah. And I was trying to drive this road further up the canyon, but it became super narrow with lots of bushes, lots of trees right on the side here. And I got, uh, I got pretty scratched up. I don't know if you can see this at all, but I added some more pinstriping to the side of the Land Cruiser. I've got some, some uh, plants stuck in there from again when I was trying to get further up the canyon. But this is as good, as good a place as any to park, I guess. We're starting off today's adventures with a hike that is, as I understand it, kind of at the upper extreme end of hiking. We're gonna do some extreme hiking slash climbing this morning, but it is gonna start off as just a hike up the canyon here. I think I have about a mile and a half of hiking to do up the canyon to get to a spot where we're gonna take a break and, and uh, discuss some of the interesting history of this area. This canyon that I've been hiking through is called Robber's Roost Canyon. There's a spring here called Robber's Roost Spring, and there's a cave just up the canyon that I'll check out in a, in a second called Robber's Roost Cave. Here the, the spring water has frozen, which I'm pretty surprised by because it's not that cold. Uh, it has been kind of cold in the last few days, and I'm guessing this doesn't get a ton of sunlight but let me show you the, the lay of the land here. Right here we have the remains of what I think was a, a little well house. A lot of the times when there's a, a spring or a well, there will be a little shelter over it to, to protect it. I think that's what this was. You can see this old concrete around the edge. Maybe there would have been a pool here, but it's long since filled in. Some wood cladding on the side. There's no water running here now, but it seems to be seeping underground. And that's where we get all of this ice here and the little trickle of water. And it flows down the limestone here and I like how there's this little open area. It's like a little miniature marsh or meadow. And then the water goes down and just kind of peters out right here. And like I said, the spring and this canyon and the cave that I'm trying to locate now are all called Robber's Roost. Not to be confused with another Robber's Roost Canyon in southern Utah. That's a much more famous one. Uh, this one, I don't really know the history behind it, but there are other Robber's Roost Canyons in other places. I, I'm pretty sure there's one in Wyoming and I think Idaho also. Usually it's because, you know, kind of common sense, but there were outlaws, there were robbers or gangs operating in an area, and this is where they would have uh, been hiding out. A canyon like this that is very rugged and extremely remote that has a spring in it and a cave in it would have been just a perfect place for outlaw types to be hanging out. Now where is that cave? So this is Robber's Roost Cave. It's more of an overhang, really. I was expecting like a deeper cave that goes into the mountain. But it is a pretty severe overhang, I'll give it that. Definitely a nice place to be hanging out. It's a hot day, so it provides just a ton of shade. Or if it's raining and snowing, this would be completely covered. It's a neat place, and I can just imagine couple of dirty, crusty brigands sitting here poking a campfire as they're roasting a rabbit, a jackrabbit. 
on a stick or something like that. You can almost feel the history oozing out of the walls here. It's interesting, this is kind of a, a two-tiered cave. There's this bottom level that is semi-flat. I mean, several people could probably unroll their, their bed rolls here. Then a higher tier, you probably wouldn't want to sleep up there, but whoa, there's some birds lapping up some of the water coming from the seep in the back of the cave there. And they were fighting. Anyway, got some gnarled branches here. Uh, I'm guessing these are here to provide access to that upper tier. I don't really want to uh, to do that, <laughs> to climb up there. They're, I, I kind of tested them out and they're, they're pretty shaky. Uh, I'm gonna limit my climbing today to some later activities. I'll save this for maybe another day and another adventure, but we've got some proper cave-like formations in the, in the back, some of that flow stone stuff. And let's go take a closer look at the back wall here. Again, we have water sort of seeping out of the rock. I don't know if this type of seepage would provide humans any any reasonable uh, comfort or use, but for animals, I'm sure it's helpful. And then you've got this little, I think this stuff is called cave popcorn. Is that right? Just these little nodules, almost looking like coral, where uh, the minerals stay behind when the water evaporates and the minerals form these little, these little formations. Okay, onward and upward, we have business to attend to. Our journey is now gonna take us further up the canyon and uphill. guys I think I think I'm ready for a break especially at this spot because that is my destination this little knob this little mountain this little rocky fortress castle sort of thing it's what I'm gonna try to climb today now that I'm here and now that I have a good view of it I mean that is just sheer cliff um, I'm a little bit uh, unsure now. I first learned about this mountain, which is called Tatao Knob. Or I don't know how you're supposed to say that. Tato Knob, Tatao Knob. I first learned about it years ago. Uh, I have two different books by an author named Michael Kelsey. He's done a ton of books about hiking and other things in Utah. Uh, one of the books is called Utah Mountaineering Guide. The other is called Let's see, it's yellow. It's called Hiking and Exploring Jack Watson's Ibex Country. And he covers this area in both of those books. I think it might even be the same information for climbing and hiking in this area in both of those books. But anyway, he says this mountain can only be climbed with technical rock climbing gear. I think I even read someone say that, uh, that this was unclimbable. Now in this day and age, nothing is really unclimbable, but being here and looking at that, I, I understand the sentiment. This has been climbed before. It does not get climbed very often. I'm going to try to climb it without any technical rock climbing gear. So no ropes, nothing like that. Again, now that I'm here and looking at it, I, I really hope the other side is, is better. But uh, I'm gonna have a snack here. Let me show you what I have to nibble on before I attack this sucker. Have you guys ever seen or had these before? I've only seen them once. There's a grocery store near my mom's house that sells these. 
and they're actually really good. Honey Stinger is a brand that makes, uh, I think they make like honey-based energy foods, so like little waffles and, and things like that. These are their nut and seed bars. I've got two different flavors here. One is almond pumpkin seed, one is peanut sunflower seed. Uh, I don't remember, it's been a little while since I've had these. I don't remember which one I like better. Let's try the almond pumpkin seed. I'll show them to you. But surprisingly good. These are, uh, you know, these are, these are tasty. I don't know if the camera is focusing on this, is it? These are surprisingly tasty. So I'm gonna spare you having to watch me eat this, but these are good. I, I remember I ordered a, a box of like 12 or 24 of these on Amazon and I, I went through all of them and great hiking food, great road trip food, great to have in your, in your uh, glove compartment or center console if you're feeling a little bit peckish while on the road. And before I head off in that direction, I wanted to zoom in so we can get a closer look at this thing. I'm hoping, I, I'm pretty sure I go somewhere over on that right side. It's obviously not vertical, not straight up and down. Uh, I don't know if it's that right skyline ridge or if it's on the other side, kind of where we can't see from now, but man, I'm feeling a little bit intimidated. Let's go get a closer look. In case I didn't make it clear, there is no trail here. Back, way back in the canyon, I was following uh, the old road and then the, uh, the bottom of the canyon, the dry wash. But since, you know, the, basically since the cave, I've just been going cross country and that's what I'll continue to do. Well, there's only one way up from here and that is up. I'm at the base of that right hand ridge, that lower angled ridge. That's what I'm heading up now. Uh, I have the drone hovering about a hundred feet away from me. Uh, and I'm gonna have that recording as I, as I climb this thing. I do have a helmet. I brought my climbing, brought my climbing helmet. So I'm gonna put that on. I'll strap the GoPro to my head and we'll head up. Wish me luck. Well, the plan was to go, well, I've had a couple different plans. I was gonna go straight up that way, then I was gonna go up this way, but it's just so potentially dangerous. You know, I know that might sound kind of obvious to you and I could also go this way, but the climbing is easy. The consequences of a fall are fatal, or at least, you know, uh, <laughs> career ending you know I don't want to end up in a wheelchair either let me go down and inspect down there maybe I can go up and left from over that way building these little cairns so that I don't get confused on the way down. Oh, 
Okay. Wow, what? What a place. What a position to be in. This is wild. I'm just gonna go straight up the ridge here. I'm fine with not climbing this mountain, by the way. If I don't feel comfortable going on, going on ahead, I'll just stop. I mean, this is already a, an amazing enough spot. But we'll see. Gonna make another little cairn. Okay. Keep going, and wow, this view, <laughs> just unreal. I think I have one last section to climb here. Oh man, this might be what stops me. The climbing has been relatively moderate. I'd say low fifth class, if that means anything to you. So basically just the sort of the low end of the technical rock climbing spectrum. But it hasn't been consistent. It's like little steps, you know. Okay, this is the crux. This is the hardest part. It's just like, like three feet above me. It gets clear. It gets easy again. All right, guys, I think we cleared it. Gonna make one last little cairn here. And I'll dismantle all of these on the way down. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a freaking mountain. Yes! I think you can probably understand when I say that that was a fairly intense experience. You know, the climbing, the climbing itself wasn't too technically difficult. And the rock was fairly solid, you know, solid enough. I didn't feel like the holds I was grabbing on were gonna pull out in my hands. And uh, even the exposure really wasn't too bad. In climbing, exposure basically means how much dead air is underneath you. Like, how exposed are you? How far will you fall? <laughs> and if you fall before you hit, hit something. None of those were really all that bad. Like the exposure, the difficulty, the rock quality, none of that was too bad. But all of it kind of together <laughs> was just, uh, you know, that was pretty intense. But what, what a climb. 
not something I would recommend for most people to do solo. Uh, if you want to come up here with a buddy and a rope and some protection, then go for it. I mean, this is this is a an amazing mountain and just an incredible position. But don't do it alone if you're not a really experienced climber and have a lot of experience uh, moving over rock. I think that's really that's really the important skill. It doesn't matter how hard you can climb because you can go to the climbing gym and climb way harder than what I did here. But if you don't have the experience doing this sort of thing, you're going to be scared out of your out of your gourd. Um, and so I've, you know, I've been climbing for 20, 25 years, something like that at this point. I don't climb too much anymore, but back in the day, like when I was in college, I climbed almost every day, did probably thousands of climbs. I did a couple hundred first descents. You know, I've done a lot of climbing in my day. And so I felt comfortable doing this. You may not, so use your own judgment. Uh, but let me show you what we have going on here. I was able to find the summit register hidden in the rocks here. We'll take a look at that in a second. Also, a previous ascensionist hid some cans of beer under there a while ago, it looks like. No, thank you. This is the little summit pile of rocks, little summit cairn. And then look at this, just empty desert. This is a, a dry lake bed out here. I actually was driving this road, this road that you can see out here, I drove this two days ago, and I took some drone footage of me driving in front of this mountain. I'll put that here so you can see it. Just, I mean, epic scenery up here. And this is looking south toward the other peaks in the house range. This is Swayze Peak, the highest in the mountain range. You can see Notch Peak, the mountain with a giant cliff on it right there in the middle. And just lots of, lots of rock, <laughs> lots of limestone, lots of cliffs, lots of mountain ranges, lots of desert. You know what there is not a lot of? People. There's no one else out there. It's the weekend. The weather is absolutely perfect. Uh, but there's just no one out here. This is just an amazing place. This is looking out toward the Deep Creek Range. It's a 12,000 foot high mountain range in far western Utah. And the Nevada border is just beyond those peaks over there. All right, let's check out the Summit Register. I haven't cracked it open yet. Let's see how often this thing gets climbed. You'll find Summit Registers inside of various canisters or containers on various peaks. Sometimes they're just in a plastic bag. Sometimes they're in an old peanut butter jar. Sometimes they're in a uh, steel pipe. Sometimes they're in a little PVC pipe like this. I don't know what is going on here. We have we have some money. First of all, we have a twenty peso Mexican bill. Weird. We have a newspaper from July eleventh, two thousand. Holy cow. 23 years old. There's just some like <laughs> trash up here. Uh, some old pictures that are, I mean, this stuff is wet. Water has gotten in here. So it's not, not in the best condition. Yeah, some pictures from, from 2000. A CD. For Juno, holy cow, that's from the 90s. Juno is like old, old school internet. That's wild. And then, yeah, just more pictures from, again, July 11th, 2000, same date as that, as that uh, newspaper. So there's no summit register up here. I'm trying to think if I have a notebook or anything with me, any papers that I can leave in here and start a little summit register. Uh, but I don't, so there's nothing for me to sign. Let's just stick all this stuff back in here. I have this video as a record of my accomplishment. And to me, this is a pretty great accomplishment. I've, you know, this is not something that gets climbed more than, I can't think like 
once every couple years or something, if that. I know it was climbed last year. I saw the guy's trip report online on Peak Bagger, but uh, it really does not get climbed very much at all. I'll make sure this is nice and tight before I stick it back in the rocks. Let me show you my drone that I'm using on this trip. I have a brand new drone. This is the DJI Mini 4 Pro. This is brand new, just came out in the last month or so, I think, or maybe about a month ago. Very small, lightweight drone. I got the controller that has the screen. This is hard to do one-handed, that has the screen built in. So I don't have to use my phone, which is nice. Awesome drone though, incredible battery life. I mean, I can fly this thing for half an hour on one battery. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to enjoy some alone time up here. Just enjoy the scenery, have a drink, you know, rehydrate myself, have a snack, and then I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to climb back down that ridge. I'm not gonna film it. I want all my attention, all my focus on getting down safely. And then uh, I'm gonna hike back out of here, hike back to the car and find the campsite. Let me read to you the stats of this ascent. It was not fast. Uh, I was, I, I felt pretty slow today, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of tired. But um, let's see, it took four hours to get up here. 2,101 feet of elevation gain, distance covered 3.68 miles. Not, I mean, not that bad. Like the, the stats, th those stats don't sound too crazy, too difficult, but of course they don't take in the technical difficulty of, of climbing up this thing. So anyway, I'll see you guys somewhere down the road, down the line, down the mountain, down at a campsite somewhere. And just as the sun is about to set over the mountains over there, I've found a pretty awesome campsite on this high, super empty plateau. It's just quiet, wide open, and empty. Cool spot. It's kind of at the edge of a, of a little cliff here like this. This slopes down sharply to the, to the valley down below. Neat area. And I can even actually see Tatao Knob over here. You guys won't be able to see it in the, in the video, I don't think, but I can see it right here, just to the right of Swayze Peak, that, that larger mountain. Again, that's the highest in that mountain range. So just to the right of that is a little nub of a mountain, and that is where we were earlier. That climb today, guys, was an all-time adventure for me. That is one of the, the coolest positions I've been in. That was one of the more enjoyable um, mountains that I've climbed. Just, uh, you know, everything came together. It was, it was difficult, but doable. It was a little bit dangerous, but again, manageable. Um, just a stunning mountain in a fantastic location, and it barely ever gets climbed. There's very little information about it online. And that all, again, just kind of came together for me, and um, this is a, a very memorable day. This is one that uh, I'm gonna think about for a long time. I'm gonna think back fondly on today's adventure. And I hope you guys will too. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I got a, a pizza from a <laughs> gas station in Delta, so I'm gonna finish that up and uh, gonna relax for the rest of the night. Tomorrow is gonna be a rest day for me. I think I'm gonna go fishing in the mountains over there, so that'll be fun. The next time you see me, uh, the next video adventure on this channel will be, I'm gonna be back here in the West Desert, actually. I'm gonna be over there somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna come back out here, do one more video in this part of the desert, and then uh, we'll move on to some other, uh, other locales. But again, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.